So of course we know he's going to go on to be one of the biggest, most important drawing cards for WCW. And then eventually all good things come to an end. It does feel as if once the streak was ended, WCW started their downhill descent. Uh, but that was at the end of 1998. He's still going to limp along through the end of WCW in 2001. And my understanding is Goldberg was still under contract to a four-year deal that he signed back July 1st, 1999. It showed, uh, we've, we've seen in court documents since two and a half million dollars per year, except the last year that would be for three and a half million. And this is way back when. So uh, you've laid out here on the show many times that the sort of downside guarantee ceiling was a million dollars and you could earn more than that, but that's what all the top guys were running around with. Does that sound about right? Yeah. The, the, in WWE, I can't speak for uh, WCW at that time, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but, but yeah, the, <clears throat> the, the landmark number that Vince wanted to be comfortable with the very top guys. And that was everybody, all the top guys that that, uh, were on that upper echelon, you know, the Austins and the takers and, and all those guys rock, uh, they're all sitting at that number, but they, they're, they blew it all away. Yes. D- during their, you know, with live events and, and all that stuff. So all the money went into their pile and off they off they go. So that's why we say you could, you could make a lot more money. It sounds like a sales pitch, right? It sounds like it's an unknown sales pitch. I, I remember having that conversation with Chris Jericho. And, uh, you know, he, he had been lied to so much, uh, as a lot of wrestlers perceive that they have that, uh, you know, well, you can, you, but you can make more money. Well, how do you make more money? Well, you get over, you get, you stay booked, you perform, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, I, uh, I, I think that that's where those numbers came from. And my current agent, Barry Bloom, uh, was Bill's agent still is, I think he represents Jericho as well. And several other talents. So, uh, it was, that's a, that's a, that's a big number. That's a big number. And I think a lot of people, a lot of guys internally in wrestling were a little jealous of that because here's bill with a limited skill set. Yes. And all of a sudden he's making this allegedly making this huge money and he was making huge money. So who has that preliminary conversation with him to just feel him out and, and talk about the, the meat of the matter, the money and the dates and all that. Is that something you're handling? Well, I'm involved in it. Yeah. I'm involved in it because I got along with bill and we communicated well. So, uh, yeah, I, I was, I was in that loop uh, and it's just, I didn't think it was going to be hard to get a deal done. You know, I, I had, I had parameters and guidelines that I could adhere to, or, or I shouldn't adhere to. And, uh, that was how that started sailing. It was a, quite an interesting little journey. So as far as you recall, you reach out to him, he doesn't reach out to you or, and he directs you to an agent or what's that process look like? Well, I knew he was working with Barry. Yeah. And Barry is no stranger to anybody. You know, he represented so many different guys over the years that, uh, and I negotiated with Barry on a lot of contracts. Ironically, now he represents me. Right. So, uh, <clears throat> So if I do another contract somewhere down the road, uh, he'll be the guy that does the, uh, negotiations <clears throat> part of me. So it's, uh, it was a really, a, I, I didn't have any, I don't remember Conrad, any negativity about the negotiations. Uh, so really no surprises and nothing really came up. It was just, we knew it was going to be a big money deal and, 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 and it was.